All right, guys, this is a light week. I don't think this is going to go over 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, I needed a break anyways. I got a few things coming in the mail, so I'll have a couple mail hauls, but this week I just went to my local shop and picked up my normal pull list and I picked up a trade paperback and one back issue. So that's going to be this week's haul after I do two from the tomb. So as I'm still scanning and organizing my whole collection after the uh, free comic book day debacle or <laughs> ended up buying multiple issues of the same crap I already have <laughs> uh, lucky it wasn't something like really expensive or I ever paid for I would have been really pissed but uh, still just aggravated me enough to sign up for a CLZ app for just the organizing of my collection so far, I've scanned about close to 2,200 books in, or looked them up and uh, selected a tab, <laughs> which I'm really starting to hate the old uh, direct comics from back in the day. I wish they were like, oh, new stand would be a lot more easier to scan most of these in. But let's get to two from the tomb. I actually bought this book a couple of years ago, and I'm not sure. I think this was during that time in 2018 where I was on and off YouTube a lot where I was uh had some things going on and uh it's like one of those through my video history of uh being on YouTube since 2012 that it's like uh 2018 is like missing a lot <laughs> but I remember picking it up around that time uh, but this is the thing that's cool because it has a it was autographed and I picked up a two price or two price half price box <laughs> for uh, two dollars. So and it has a little uh, sketch from one of my favorite artists. So it was like a miracle. I remember just going up and uh, driving by and I was like, eh, I'm gonna pull in real quick. I got a feeling in it and this book was in here. I remember like it was yesterday. But it's a it's a miracle man book with a. Uh, the little head sketch signed by Norm Brayfogle. I'm a whole huge, huge Norm Brayfogle fan from uh, his Detective Comics run, which originally got me started reading Batman a lot back in the day. For uh, yeah, I started like with issue like 603 or 60, yeah, 603, I think I started with. Um, and I was a huge fan of his ever since. Then he went when he switched to Batman, it was even better. Uh, but yeah, it's cool. We can see right here. At first, I thought it was just part of the uh, the cover, but uh, end up uh, looking it up and like this part's not even here. So that was awesome. And that's his signature right there. That's one of the three signatures I have from him. That you know, and I'll never. He was one of the few artists I really wanted to meet back in the day, and uh, he was gone before you know I could eventually run into them. And this other one, so both of these are going to have remarks on them, so I figured that was a good uh, two from the tomb, so I picked up, uh, or picked up, I picked out Donald Duck Adventures, Patrick Block, autographed that and he drew a Scrooge McDuck on there. So, it was just cool because I was scanning or putting these in the system, and I was like, "Man, I was like, this is this is pretty awesome." So I got to show these off this week. So that's my two from the tomb. Like I said, this week was just an off week. I just really didn't feel like I was. I'm more worried about organizing my collection, and of course, that doesn't make a great video. <laughs> just me there, sitting there, standing there, uh, or sitting there scanning. You see, I got like this like four and a half foot long desk. I'm, stacking everything out and uh if you really want to see a video of that maybe i'll uh, <laughs> just an hour of me just scanning stuff in yeah not saying anything listening to sequential geeks uh, latest video <laughs> there you go i'll listen to somebody else's video oh, my, my. <laughs> all right i'm thinking this debate when i want to maybe i'll share the new stuff first and i'll get to the one back issue and trade paperback that i picked up 
Let's do it that way because I'm sort of pissed off right now, to be honest with you. Uh, in the 30 plus years that I've been collecting, I've never wanted to, I've, I shouldn't say never. It's probably maybe the third time I've wanted to take a book back to the shop and get my money back. Um, let me just show you the book so you're not staring at a blank screen, but it was... Superman vs. Lobo. You know, I got a pretty cool Simon Bisley cover on there. That's about the highlight of this book. I should just rip the cover off and uh, throw the rest of it away. Um, I may go back and look at issue two, but this was uh, this was so hard to read. This is like, you no, know, it was so hard to read. If you're, it wouldn't probably be so hard to read if you're somebody that loves being on Twitter for 18 hours a day. A lot of inside, ha ha ha. BS like that. I mean, the art's fine, but it, I don't know. It just, it's a lot of that. There's the logo. There's a lot of just inside, uh, inside jokes, I guess. You I mean, <laughs> it just, and then there's one part that really just like pushed me right over the edge. Let me see if I can show you real quick. As, as you can see right here, this part just like that just like really went it really went downhill from there. I mean, look at this man. You got the main man being carried around like he's goddamn Lois Lane, you know. But just it, it like this is a freaking black label book, people. A Lobo book shouldn't be that hard to write. It should be brutal, violent, lots of edgy stuff. Sabine said, "This was safe." <laughs> This was, I love Twitter. <laughs> Biggest concern of people are in this book are being canceled on uh, online. Superman and Lobo are both worried about it. Like, either of these two would give two rats ass about that. I mean, it's a shame. I, w I was really looking forward to this. I was like, finally, I've been asking for this for years. Or whatever. A mature titled Lobo title. It's even self-censored, man. They're like blocking out swear words and stuff. I mean, go from showing like Batman's Wang to self-censoring yourself, man. You're getting fucking real. <laughs> so, as you can tell, I really didn't care for this book. I was just like, so, buy it at your own risk. But I really wanted to take it back and just get my money back, but uh, I support my LCS, so I wouldn't do that to him. Next time I'm just going to read the whole damn thing then, but... <laughs> but, I mean, come on. Is it really that hard? I mean, I can probably think off the top of my head, you know. Lobo versus Superman. Or Superman versus Lobo. Somebody write Lobo versus Superman, man. Read right this crap. Give us what we want. We want a violent, offensive Lobo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, busy did busy. They like, basically saved this for me. I mean, this would be right in the trash. How many of you showing this right now? But uh, I do like this busy cover. You got the freaking uh, kryptonite brass knuckles, you know, a la Lex Luthor back from was it two issue Batman issue two ninety five, punching the glasses right off Clark Kent, man. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's not that hard to write a a violent Lobo story, funny Lobo story. That was neither funny nor violent, and it was quite frankly boring. Something like my, you know, somebody's aunt would like or something like that. Oh, ha ha ha! You know, Twitter stuff. You know, no, I'm not. I'm, I have a Twitter account, and I don't even. I go on it a little bit. But anyways, let's get to something good. So I picked up uh, King Spawn also. Now this was worth the price of admission, so definitely if you haven't been picking up a spawn or the uh, a couple of uh, 
new titles that are out there. So I picked up that and I picked up the McFarlane cover and I picked up the David Finch. And yeah, I just love this cover, so I figured out I'm gonna buy it. Should have bought another one and I bought the other thing, but let's not go there. <laughs> but yeah, this is a uh, this is really worth the money, I'd say. Uh, if you're not reading this, there's a little, one main story and then there's a couple of little, well, it's not like anthology, but like uh, just small stories, backstories, I'm not sure. I think uh, if you're reading Batman, like the backstory, a couple pages of the last, but there's like three or four of them in there. So I'm going to keep up it and keep that there for the eye candy. Picked up uh, Sin City. Uh, I need, only need one more uh, volume of this so I can have my uh, all the ones that look the exact same. I got like I've never read this one and I didn't read I need issue number uh, or volume six I should say not issue but I've never read this volume so I'm super uh, excited to read it. Just a lot of uh, I'm a huge Frank Miller Sin City fan but it's one of the things I wanted to uh, I've read the first two so that I of course need to issue or number three so. And I'm debating whether to like go back and collect all like the single issues and stuff like that, but I don't think I will uh, unless I find them like really dirt cheap. I'm talking less than a dollar each. But yeah, it's a nice book, and I ended up paying eight bucks for it, so and it's regularly uh, seventeen dollars. If I wanted to buy it like at Amazon or something. But yeah, the cool thing is it's like uh once you put it on the shelf. Which reminds me, I gotta do another. My uh, graphic novel slash trade paperback video that I did a couple of years ago is really outdated. I sold like a bunch of them. Well, I gave a lot of them away, but I sold a few of them to half price books for pretty cheap. <laughs> I just needed to get make room, so I ended up. Uh, Taking them up there and then I end up picking up something else. <laughs> but uh, I need to do it. The main story is I need to do another video. So maybe I'll do one of those in the next coming, upcoming weeks. The last thing I bought. I decided to start uh, looking for some uh, different things to read. And I know I haven't read this issue. So And all my, uh, like I think essential Spider-Man's, they don't go up this high. I think I stopped at either four or five. Um, I haven't actually read the last one, so I gotta check that one out. The fifth volume. But anyways, uh, I ended up picking up Amazing Spider-Man issue number 175. Of course, with the Punisher on the cover there. I ended up paying $7 for it. I think I got a pretty decent deal. That's awesome. I mean, uh, my Amazing Spider-Man runs coming along too. It's been one of those runs that I've just been piecing together throughout the years without even uh, really concentrating on it. Besides the McFarlane uh, run that he had, that Amazing Spider-Man had. I think, according to my CLZ app, I'm pretty close to 100 issues, which is like laughable to I know a lot of people. But to me, uh, if we're not even uh, trying to collect it, 100 issues of a certain series is pretty, uh, pretty impressive. <laughs> I do say so myself. All right, guys. Sorry to be negative about this, but uh, it was just, <laughs> it just is. <laughs> we'll just leave with that. Alrighty, guys. Thanks for watching. Check out the channels down below. If you're uh, new to this channel, definitely check them out. Uh, they all uh, put out great content. Um, just uh, also check out my uh, Instagram account too. I've been trying to put some new ones up there, but new pictures and stuff like that. But like I said, I've been scanning. So if I don't get to your videos right away or something like that, if I've been popping up like a day or two later on some people's. It's not because I'm not uh, trying to hurry up or I'm just like uh, too busy uh, scanning right now. I'm watching the videos, but uh, I watch them on the uh, on the television set. 
and unfortunately I'm not that good uh, good enough to re <laughs> reply with a little uh, you know remote <laughs> so I have to get log back on get back on the phone and uh, write some uh, write some comments uh, you might see me like a video if you saw, see on my page or something like that but um, it just takes me a day or two to get back to it alright guys thanks for watching mm -hmm.